Good Thursday morning to all of you. I've got very good news for you. I'm going to talk to you about being clothed with Christ. Being clothed with Christ. This is such a revolutionary concept. It is something that changes the mind and it's truly in the true sense of the word it brings a revolution it brings a new way of living a breaking free of the status quo and it brings forth something that this earth has not really seen it brings forth something that we can think of 2000 years ago which is the man Jesus his resurrection his power and his life. I want to read from Galatians chapter 3. It says, So in Christ you are all children of God through faith. What that means is, in Christ Jesus, as we believe in Jesus and believe in the Father that raised him from the dead, we find that we are those that are born from God. Now, to explain born from God to you, think of being born from your mother. You are born from your mother. Through her, you've entered into life. Now, imagine your physical body born from God, coming forth only from God. I mean, if you think that you were a baby in your mom, mother's arms and you were born from him, you think that the attributes and whatever she is, is also to a certain degree inside you. But imagine the living God giving birth to a physical human being without having any mother involved. What would that human being look like? Now, that is what uh, Paul is talking about here. A complete revolutionary way of thinking about physical human beings. Let me read it. So, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. Now, we think that children of God means, well, God is my daddy in some spiritual way. I don't know how to explain it. But what Paul has got in mind here is something very physical. He says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized in, for all of you that were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. We are clothed with Christ. There, is neither Jew nor Gentile. Now listen to this. Neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What I'm saying is that as long as the child is an heir, he's under, excuse me, and underaged, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by the father. Now listen to this. So also, when we were underaged, we were in slavery under the in, uh, elemental spiritual forces of this world. He's talking about death there. But then when the set time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So what he's saying is absolutely mind-blowing. It is something that is so far from what we are if we are used to hearing that our minds struggle to really grab a hold of this. You have been born of your mother, okay? But now it says here 
that you can receive the adoption of sons, meaning that you, as a whole human being, can be adopted unto God, a concept where, and not just a concept, a reality and a truth, where the Christ, Jesus the Christ, the glorified human being Jesus, where he is, where he is in a condition that God himself finds him in. The only difference is, is that Jesus finds himself in that condition bodily, where there's neither male or female, where there's neither uh, slave nor free, where these concepts of slavery, male and female, the basic elements of this world, which is found in in the realities of this world where that does not even exist. Now, we today, we don't see that manifest in us, but that is what we have been clothed with. That is the reality we have been adopted into as complete human beings. You might say, but Bertie, that is, uh, that means that you are your mind would then, if you want to live like that, your mind cannot be on this earth. You, your mind must be in a different place. Now, let us look at another scripture in the Bible. Do you want to say this? <laughs> it would take God and his power of recreation, bringing forth a new physical creation in order for you to be physically adopted unto God, to be adopted unto God being your father. Think of Jesus. He was born of a woman, but after being born of a woman and he died, he was then bodily reborn, recreated bodily unto the fullness of God as a human being. He was born from the dead. And the scripture says, this day have I begotten you. Isn't that mind-blowing? Isn't that above what we could ever imagine or think? It is. It is. And that is the foundation of Christianity, or let me use it this word, Christianity. What Christ means, it means the one who now rules over sin and death, who has attained a place where he has bodily reached the fullness of God. And through him, we are clothed in our, as physical humans by him. And so we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> Oh, how high, how wide, how deep, and how long is the love of God. Oh, how unsearchable the dimensions of his wisdom and knowledge and grace. Glory to God. Now, let us quickly, with that in mind, I mean, that is like opening somebody's mouth and shoving a steak down his throat, giving him no chance to swallow or chew. Now, let us go to... Um, I wanted to go to Colossians. Let me just go to Colossians chapter 3. Listen to this. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your heart, your belief, your mind, everything about you on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Now, can you see Christ now? I mean, I'm asking you, just a simple question. Don't think too deep about this. Don't worry about this. This is a simple question. It's not a trick question. Can you see Christ right now? No, he's hidden. We see, we know that he entered into a dimension or into a place which we cannot behold right now. It's called heaven. Can you see the physical Jesus Christ now? No, you cannot see him. He is hidden. Now, listen to what he says here. He says that when we died, we died with him, or we died with him, and we, who we really are, are already risen with him. 
But who we are is hidden. We cannot see it. But as truly as what Jesus Christ possesses an immortal body that cannot die, that's above the things of this world, and we, but we cannot see him, as true as what that is, we are risen with him. But who we are is hidden. It is not revealed. It's not manifested, but it's really, really true. It's like um, money in the bank. You take physical rands, you go, or physical dollars, whatever country you're in, pounds, euros, you go and bank it in the bank. Can you, after you've banked it a year later, you've invested it there, can you see the money? No, the money is hidden in the bank. All you see is a number on your phone. That number on your phone tells you that you do have money. But that is not the money. It is a sign or an indication of the money. You can't see it. It's hidden in the bank. Now, some, are, I mean, in today's way, the way people work with money, you don't even know if the money is really in the bank. It's actually not a very good analogy. Uh, but... If it was the case with gold, it would be we would have a paper that say you've got that gold, but you're not seeing the gold. It's hidden, but it's truly there. And your life today, the confidence that you have, how you live in this life, the peace about your finances is all born from what is hidden and not seen. And we know that it can be revealed. And because of the truth that it can be revealed, we have actually a life born from what is hidden. Meaning you're not worrying about money because you know you've got a lot of gold in the bank, a lot of money in the bank. So you're not stressed about finances. You're not stressed about a lot of things. Why? Because you know you've got the stuff, but you can't see it. It's hidden. In the very same way, it says here, since then, you have been, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Who's Christ? The glorified human being that has reached the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Set your heart on the things above where Christ is seated. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. But listen to this. When Christ who is your life, appears, then also you will appear with him in the very same glory he has. So you're not needing, you don't need anything. You already have it all. You, all that is outstanding is the appearing of who you are. That's all. The appearing of the truth. Is Christ really risen from the dead? Does he have eternal life? Yes. Do we see him? No. Will he appear? Yes. The very same with you. You don't need works of the law to bring forth a new life to you. You already have the new life. The only thing that is outstanding is that what you are should appear. You're just lacking an appearing. I'm not talking appearing as in you appear in one way, but you actually another, another thing. Like somebody can appear very friendly, but he is a bad person. Now, we, the appearing actually means the revealing and the showing forth of the real truth about you. I want to tell you, as true as what Jesus Christ has got eternal life is above all sin and death and above all of those things, that's how true it is for you. And it shall appear. It's so true that you can now have a life born from that reality. As what somebody who's got a million dollars of gold in the bank that doesn't see it, but have a life according to it, although he doesn't see it because it's hidden in the uh, safe deposit, deposit box or in the, in the vault in the bank. In the very same way, we have eternal life with God, eternal life bodily, <laughs> eternal life as a full human being. It might not yet appear, but 
we can set our affection and our mind on what is true and real. And when he appears, you shall, oh my goodness, I preached 15 minutes, you shall appear with him in glory. You shall appear. (laughs) And that appearance will be right from here, out of the fullness of God. And what he is shall be manifested and seen as truly in you. Now, since I've already gone over time and since we already have eternal life, let me quickly jump back. Um, Time is not a true issue here. So bad it doesn't appear as if I've got a lot of time. (laughs) Set your affection on the things that are above. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Listen to this. What I'm saying is this, that as long as what, sorry, 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 verse, chapter 3, verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ. You have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew, in that condition, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in or united with Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, you are truly the descendants of Abraham and heirs of what God has promised which is eternal life. Eternal life is not a place you go to when you die. Eternal life is the very condition of God bodily in humans. Glory to God. Well, I wanted to keep this very simple, but this is actually as simple as what it gets. Just meditate on this. Think on this and have a life born from this reality as your mind is set on the things above. Amen.